Konnichiwa. Welcome to this very special Korea Cabaret brought to you by the participants of the Trans Nemeth Project at the National Museum of Wales for Swansea Pride. Trans Nemeth is a National Museum of Wales project for the LGBTQ young people aged 16 to 25. It explores queer and gender non-conforming figures in Welsh history and supports participants to create work inspired by their own experiences. I am your host, participant of Trans Nemeth, Oscar von Ruland. In this cabaret, you can expect film, spoken word, drag and art performances inspired by queer Welsh history, all responding to the theme of transformations and the participants' own personal experiences of being LGBTQ and living in Wales today. Up first is a video titled A Place to Call Home by Gethin Watkins as Deborah de Beauvoir. Deborah has always resented being raised in Taft's well. It only took a global pandemic and the shutdown of society for them to truly appreciate what they are so lucky to have around them. I've always had a bit of a weird relationship with home. For the longest time, I always felt like your hometown was somewhere you escaped from. I'd always kind of resented being brought up in a semi-urban, semi-rural place and I couldn't imagine a worse fate than having to stay here any longer than I had to. That is, until 2020, when I had an unexpected change of heart. Like most people during 2020, I had been confined to my house for the majority of my time, which kind of sucked because it just so happened to be rather small and rather dark. And with my job prospects and mental health, at a rock bottom, I made the reluctant decision to return home. This time though, it was a bit different. For the first time, I was surprised to see that I didn't totally hate it here. I was for the first time kind of enjoying being back home. It was like a weight had been lifted, honestly, in my old rental house. I'd spent the last six months with the view of a brick wall. And now when I looked out of the window, it was like seeing all of these mountains around me for the very first time. Lots of people have taken up surprise hobbies in lockdown and mine's turned out to just be mountain staring, which is what it sounds like. You just stare at the scenery and take it all in. It hadn't ever occurred to me until now that where I grew up could actually be so healing. Another thing that doesn't help is that I've always found overt Welshness a bit cringy. The patriotism, the proudness, it was never my thing to be honest. Being back here and seeing it just made me think of school. The gay thing doesn't help either, especially when there's such an emphasis on the past. This proud legacy that you're supposed to be lucky to be a part of. And there's not much of a discussion of how we can embrace the new and exciting. It's hard to be proud of something that's never really brought you joy. But throughout this past year, amongst the sanctuary of the hills and the mountains, I started to see this place as my own. Somewhere that isn't a hindrance or jail, but somewhere I can actually call home. I suppose it means uh, identity and expression and liberation and being not just proud of my sort of person and myself and who are, and all the sort of different types of people that there are in the world but also making sure that all those people are safe and welcome in the world. I think pride is both a celebration and a protest. It's a celebration of myself and ourselves, of the community, a chance to rest and be around loads of other queer people and find joy <laughs> but I also think that it's a protest um, and it's a fight for all the things that we still have left to come. Oh, it feels like kind of instills a sense of community and togetherness I think like the idea of being able to come as one and kind of celebrate our community as well as being like really proud of yourself and being proud of who you are um, but also remembering that we need to kind of lift other people up and make them feel proud of themselves and yeah let them know that it's okay to be themselves so like pride for me means going up and meeting with my friends and dressing in like really nice clothes 
and just like enjoying each other's company rather than um and like learning about history and like thinking about queerness but like it's like very much like a time where it's just like very focused on my friendships it's really nice next up we have a very special piece by me oscar von ruland your host this piece is called refragmented dreams of rebirth this is a series of lines taken from the queer poet evan morgan's collection fragments and reconstructed into a full poem exploring themes of dreams death and rebirth these are seen through the lives of a legendary Welsh beast, the Cunanan. Gentle ripple of the stream, bring back to me the memory of youth's love dream. O oh, rushing rivers of the morn, bring back to me the memory of love freeborn. I lay in the arms of a dream, and I dreamed that my dream was true, and wondered when myself, my inner soul, would breathe the breath of freedom, truly free. Watching the blood and matter in the bowl pour from myself a human part of me. This much we hope and think we lived before, and that in life once more our soul we yet may sink. A summer's dream, there could the soul gaze peacefully abroad, wholly contented o'er the verdant road. No burning thought of strife and bitter war, poison the air, tranquility to mark. But amidst them, quiet herds and flocks around lie dreaming on the scented meadow ground. Like to this, the field then is the soul that sleeps, freed and untrammeled of the arms of dreams. Yet, yet, my soul in comfort ne'er may be, till all that my soul loves from strife is free. The love of my dreams turned and rent me and coldly bade me go. Still shall I dream of thy story, and when my frame is old, and the strands of my hair grow hoary, and my heart sighs sapped and cold, then, garland of love, will I listen to the fables that now you tell, and my sunken eyes will glisten as I stand at the gates of hell. Whence come our youth's ideals? Whence the sensation of reincarnation? What hands will break the seals? We feel that we have been, yet know not where, and scarcely do we dare to probe the things unseen. And yet, today, tis sweeter, for I have kissed the name. With me he claimed an intimate connection. He said that he was but thine own reflection. I was war, seeking for more and more to disillusion, crumble and destroy, like some untutored, selfish, childish boy. In each of the mouldy beds o'er which your back is bent, you lay to rest a portion of yourself. My hungry nails were forced to reap a gentler harvest. This life a life outliving, intensely old, like to a tale we told, past with the presence striving. This next video is Trous Noid, written and filmed by Breffney Heyman, audio design and narration by Yoan Willis. This video accompanies a poem written about how it feels to be queer in Wales and the feeling of isolation that sometimes comes with being swallowed by a land of rain. Transcend. Is first try am said call. Llawn am ser coll. Trio tyfu pyn afol yn canol treth geu afol. Glaw yn syrthio dros cyrf, dros tir. Pattering over rooftops trwy'r croen tan byd i gyd dan dagrair awyr. The sky is always changing fast, never still. Dyn ni'n a i fy corfel cwmwl gorwedd yn ddys daw dros y bryn. Ne fy ni'n chwestio ni. Dyna sut mae cwmwl yn fyw. Ffyrf newidiadol gwyll hynafol. Ond beth ydyn ni? Mae hyd yn oed craig yn newid i wynebau. Mwy'n sogl yn thyfu pen i weirid, 
ac ni yn wyneb yn crynu trwy roesau. Pwy sy'n galw arnom trwy hanes. Pobl coll, amser coll, yn galw ni nôl i'r llif. Syrthion nôl mewn i'm lad i cael flasu'r awen ei newidiant a ddod ar traws newid yn fyw unwaith eto. Up next, we have a video by Alad Williams. You are humbly invited to the wedding of Ivan Nicecock and Mia Mann. Presents can be left at the door, and please don't arrive looking prettier than the bride.
up next, we have a video titled One Dusk, Two High Noon, Three Dawn. A cycle of poems exploring the poet's own personal relationships to femininity and queerness. The poems are also a commentary on the social construct of gender and the power and beauty in reclaiming queerness, femininity and rejecting heteronormativity. I was invisible to you before I cut my hair and marked myself against your society. But still you question me for having the audacity to try to leave the closet that you built for me. This one word that holds a million and one complexities, and yet it's defined by others for me. That's not ladylike. But I, a lady, did it. I define my femininity, you do not define me, I define my queerness, not your recognition or lack. God made day and night, and Adam and Eve. But God also made dawn and dusk, and people in between. If we can admire the sunset, why can't we admire beyond the binary? Up next, we have a video titled CBP by Callum Bruce Phillips, a personal, poetic-ish documentary about pandemic life and moving home. I live for the sea. Not going in it, just watching it. See the foam bubble on its surface. The waves toing and throwing back and forth. On the day when my confinement gets too much, the sea vapours cure my cabin fever. Aberystwyth has been so good to me. Aberystwyth, now. A nostalgic yearning which is, in itself, more pleasant than the thing being yearned for. Douglas Adams and John Lloyd. How much will I yearn for Abba when I leave? Will it happen the day I go or months down the line? It's gonna hurt. I know that. In the last year, I've spent a lot of time looking into a mirror. Nothing else to do. This is me. Long hair in a bun, a scruffy beard, and a questionable moustache. 
I bought more sunglasses of the internet. Not sure which I like the best. Brown or pink? Brown or pink? Pink or brown? Hmm. Pink. I'm in Swansea now. New place, new people, bigger place. Definitely getting a lot more messages. You know that sound. I weighed myself since moving. I've gone from 95 kilograms to 88. Ooh, better update my profile. I was happy about this until I thought about it a bit more. Hmm. I often find myself back in Aberystwyth, by the beach, in my dreams, in black and white, with grain and scratches distorting my view. Who doesn't like to dream in celluloid? Four by three, perfect. I always find myself below, below something, under the cliff, under the pontoon, under the pier. I make my way to the surface. I see the cliff. I see the pontoon. I see the pier. It's not always black and white. Colour seeps in like a dye, spreading across the frame. I see my favourite boat in the harbour, a small blue fishing boat or dinghy. I just think it's so cute. Can boats be cute? There's always a ringing sound towards the end of the dream, like a telephone. Who's down the line? Who's there? I answer it. The ring turns into a buzz and I wake. So when I was younger, I definitely used to see my queer identity and national identity as like very separate things. Like they didn't, I couldn't see how they connected in my mind, especially since like at the time, like queerness wasn't as well represented as it is now. So like it was very hard for me to see how like they intersect. But then when I started meeting more queer people and like, um, like getting to know queer people like really helped me sort of like connect all aspects of my identity I used to think were like very separate things and see it as like a whole thing and like I think that was really helpful and then learning in particularly about uh, queer Welsh history has really like connected the both together and it's been really nice. Uh, so being born in Wales and being raised in Wales obviously I have quite a strong connection to Welsh heritage and Welsh culture so that's sort of the first thing and then as I've gotten older and learned more about uh, the LGBT history of Wales and things like that I've definitely become a lot more connected to Welsh heritage. Yeah heritage wise to be honest I've never been that aware of Welsh heritage specifically um, I'm currently reading the book A Little Gay History of Wales and learning a lot there and definitely feeling more connected to Wales specifically as a queer person with figures to sort of look up to more and in my first pride parade in Cardiff when I was a teenager I actually worked with LGSM the movie pride has always been one that I felt very connected to and in uni I used to watch it a lot when I was feeling homesick because it's very Welsh and very gay and very feel good. I've always felt a deep connection with the landscape 
and uh, like living and growing up in a rural area, I think. And the way Wales is just constructed in terms of like the landscape is just really queer in like a really weird way. And there's something kind of odd about Wales, but in a good way, something that's different. Up next, we have a piece titled Hung, a digital exhibition by queer artists Luke Roberts and Breffney Heyman. The exhibition plays with queer figures, placing them in the wild to see how they move. For, for a lot of the work in the exhibition is taken from like my sketchbooks and things like that just like when I was researching queer figures in history and also when I was thinking about the body as a sort of like abstract idea and mm -hmm. like trying to visually create it as an abstract space like the body is an abstract being rather mm -hmm. than defined in societal expectations of gender and stuff like that so that you can just see perhaps a person or an animal rather than this specific person with this specific thing but it's also reference queer things at the same time and yeah for a while I wasn't working in colour as well so a lot of the ones in the exhibition are just hand drawing because I was at the time very into hand drawing like really detailed but now I've gone more into colour and more abstract things which are much more fun and I always enjoy doing more. I'm in a transitional state with my practice at the moment and I feel like unsure about it in a weird way. Like it's in a state of becoming, if that makes any sense. Before Christmas and throughout lockdown, I kind of found what I wanted to do. I wanted to make work about queer identity and stuff like that. And it, I was finding it really helpful at the time because it was helping me poke my own identity and kind of see where I sat within that community. And then but I realised that I was kind of just painting penises. And that's like a very cliched cis gay man's kind of view. It's like a, th a thing that a lot of people tend to go for. And then I, through questioning whether I wanted to make work in the same way as everyone else, I realised that I kind of wasn't like, like everyone else. Each thing has kind of bounced off each other. And through the art, I've understood myself better. And through myself, I've understood my art better. And it's kind of developed like that. A lot of my work used to be about mapping my own identity and how I feel about gender and how I relate to it, just like the masculine and the feminine, through stories trying to get it together as a map. I'm looking at gender, memory, at, at like sexuality and, and stuff like that. But I think, you know, sometimes I forget that a really large part of being LGBT is actually community. My paintings are self-portraits, studies of surface and an exploration of the barrier between the abstract and the figurative. I create artwork that investigates queerness through the term kind of human condition. My works uh, represent a playful push against traditional representations of the human body, portraying flesh physically and tangibly through the prism of my own sexuality. My name's Breffney and I'm an illustrator who does some writing sometimes and I'm based in Swansea. My work is focusing on interpreting identity through research. I create stories, books and zines as well as performance and I'm very interested in history, folklore and Gnostic theology. Through my work, I want to encourage people to feel comfortable about the parts of themselves or others that they might not like or understand. I do this through depicting unsettling figures and using stories to illustrate an outsider's perspective on self-identity. Putting definitions on things are really difficult and that's what I find making drawings is like defining what it's going to be is the most difficult part and I think it's much more fun to just be like oh whatever and just try and figure it out without putting labels on it.
even though I do enjoy having queer labels and stuff like that, mm-hmm. like I think that's really fun. But I like to be much less defined. Using them to bounce off and finding out how they fit and how they don't fit with you rather mm-hmm. than just going, you know, this is what I am and this is the box that I exist within now. Because I think that could be a really like, harmful thing. And I think the same is true when you're making work, isn't it? There's definitely a tie between how you understand yourself and how you understand your work. And I think it's sometimes just best to let go and just make for the sake of making and not put labels on things. Up next, we have the Maybe Noggy On, story and concept by Petros Kotelaris and Lily Tiger. Starring Petros Kotelaris, camera and editing by Lily Tiger. The Maybe Noggy On takes a direct inspiration from the Welsh book of legends, the Mabinogi On, or maybe not. When a Cypriot man met a Welsh woman, the Maybe Noggy On was born. Witness transformation, animism, and a hint of irony in this classic tale. Disclaimer, Peace may contain pieces of trout and swordfish. Many moons ago, in a land home to all kinds of fantastic creatures, birds, insects, and plants known and unknown, there lived a boy and his father. In days of plenty, their land's harvest was bountiful, and the bellies of their herds filled with pastures green. The boy and his father's bellies were full too, as life flourished around them. As the years went on, what was once known and certain became muddied. Their crops failed, the animals were snatched by disease, and what was left of the once healthy farm was dust. With each passing day, the father grew more well, his body began to fail. Night falls, and the soft scratching of a bird's claws against the floorboards aroused the man's attention. A small partridge appeared. Sir, I have listened to your belly rumbling all day. Here, share my grain. The man glances down at the bird in the sting. Shoo, mangy hen, whatever demons send you here, be God. Your grains will not fill my belly. And the partridge left. The sky sees another rise and fall. The moon appears in all its glory, while the man and his son grow weak and grey. The gentle scuff of the hoof against the barn door raises the sun's slumped figure. A goat appears and bleats. <laughs> I have listened to your belly rumbling all day. You must be starving here. Share my hay and turnips. The boy shakes his head. Shoot, dirty goat. Whatever demon sent you here, be gone. Your grass will not fill my belly. And I won't be drinking your milk either. You are not welcome here. And the goat left. Another hot and fruitless day drags into nightfall. Death is ever close. A cacophony of crushing and clattering shakes the house and wakes the father and sons from their deathly slumber. A large brown bear pushes through the door frame and goes, I have listened to your bellies rumbling far from the riverbank, but I did not expect this. You are skinny and frail, practically dead. I was hoping you would be full and fat. The river is as dry as a thread. As luck would have it, I have just one special rainbow trout fish. New special limited edition rainbow trout sandwiches with real rainbow trout. Only for this month and this month only. Mm. Be proud. Days proud. Feel the rainbow all around. Special limited edition pride trout fillet sandwiches 
with real rainbow trout. <laughs> We've come to the end of our cabaret. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. A massive thank you to every single person who contributed to making it. I've been your host, Oscar von Ruland. Goodbye.